just say this once so the biased, ideologically stratified simps who inevitably array around any Alex Jones-related video can retire to their partisan pissing contest and shriek in the comments about the imaginary biases towards the man you consider me to hold. If that's your impression entering into this video, suck my nuts and make yourself useful or click off the fucking video. It ain't that fucking hard because I could lean further to the left than a one-legged tightrope walker in a windstorm and still know Alex Jones got Fucked. If it helps, you can know my background with Alex Jones. There, that was educational. Was never a fan. He's a living meme and a fucking funny one, but I've never regularly viewed his shit or considered his program a genuine effort to inform. And given that he called it performance entertainment not long ago in a court of law, no less, evidently neither does he. But his conviction, particularly with an astronomical monetary figure attached, is so ass backward and authoritarian all at once... It's proven Alex Jones right. Alex Jones wasn't convicted of disinformation. He wasn't even convicted of the stated charge of orchestrated harassment damages, a tough sell likely to lose on appeal due to the simple fact that Alex Jones never specifically directed his listeners to target or harass anyone at all, nor facilitated any attempt to do so by doxing them. Let's be real here, folks. Alex Jones was convicted of being Alex Jones. I mean, whatever you feel about his remarks, and personally, I give not the faintest fuck, they're just words. The suggestion that a program whose entire formula is promulgating conspiratorial rumor should be shit hammered in a court of theoretical law for promulgating conspiratorial rumor is a bigger laugh than Stephen Colbert will ever generate. If that's the case, Coast to Coast AM is fucked. If our hyper-politicized judiciary reigned in the 80s or 90s, we'd be too busy dissecting the particulars of the shadow people versus Art Bell to even notice Alec Jones's skeletor sound and ass. What bothers me particularly about this case is that the plaintiff here isn't even really the parents. This is essentially a case filed, forwarded, and fucking prosecuted by the festering fucking shitbags at Media Matters and Right Wing Watch. Prior to 2016, there were rumblings about the insensitivity of Alex Jones's coverage of Sandy Hook for a fact, but in the overall, he was seen as a reactionary goof and no one of note paid him the faintest fucking mind. But it's a hell of a thing how when old Alex cast his lot in with Trump in 2015, suddenly he was on the exact same radar as so many of their other targets and exactly as they'd done to get Michael Savage placed on a no-fly list to Europe, suddenly these remarks were getting more airtime than moderate to severe plaque psoriasis, which in the end is what truly broiled the fucking waters. Like the Cosby kangaroo court before it, thanks to a willing and propagandist media and juries who have turned lying about their level of knowledge about a case into a fucking art form, these proceedings and their prequels were poisoned before they ever fucking commenced. Understand this, his guilt was determined beforehand. And I don't mean that in a hyperbolic sense. Anyone can see if these trials were any more for show, it'd be on the binge bar at fucking Netflix. I mean, he was convicted before trial in a very real, very technical legal sense. The judge in this case, a crepe-complected wine mom appointed by corrupt rhino Governor John Rowland and conveniently appointed to her present post overseeing this case, the very same month it was to begin being heard, issued a default judgment against Alex Jones for what she deemed failure to accommodate discovery, meaning to surrender relevant evidence or documentation to the court. Alex Jones, for his part, has repeatedly alleged he forked over every solitary thing the court ever asked for. So despite no evidentiary image ever being taken to determine whether he was lying or not, she essentially deemed he'd lost his goddamn case via default judgment months before he fucking did. Essentially, all the court has been deciding since August is just how much Alex Jones is gonna pay. About the only thing this farce was missing was a fucking ceiling fan. This courtroom was more marsupial than municipal. And that's just in this trial, people. Anyone with the memory of a goldfish remembers Alex's last judge, a literal vote blue no matter who hag, named Maya Guerra Gamble, who took multiple opportunities to berate her own defendant while sitting on the stand. I'm not saying Alex Jones got railroaded here, but the bailiff was John Henry. But while the cards in this case were even more stacked than Christy Canyon, the truth is this dude's legal representation made Lionel Hutz look like Cicero. A little unsolicited legal advice for the Razor Force. If your lawyer has a ponytail, prep your poop shoot for prison. Memo to Norm Pattis, openly arguing with a robed fucking 
femme scold appointed by a corrupt establishment shitbag who looks like she's perpetually smelling a hard-boiled egg fart is the exact opposite of competent legal representation. Now, in fairness to Same, he could have kicked down the doors and done a Daniel Webster up and down that courtroom, and that judge was still going to hit him harder than Ike Turner. Simple and plain. This trial wasn't directed at Alex Jones. It was directed at me, you, and anyone without a fucking press pass. Shut the fuck up or pay the fuck up. In this case, an astronomical, legally and morally unjustifiable one billion butt-fucking dollars. Granted, after Biden inflation, that barely buys a good pair of cargo pants or a decent shotgun to blow your head off for wearing fucking cargo pants, but this is less a court case than a message. In fact, the prosecutor in the case said explicitly and without reprimand from a judge who swore in a Bible to uphold the right to freedom of speech, that the only reason this case was filed was to quote, remove Alex Jones's megaphone, meaning his ability to publicly communicate. I repeat, the prosecuting attorney admitted before a biased judge that the only purpose of this case was to shut one man up. And the judge didn't say dick. So yes, it's a joke. It's a living parody. It makes Judge Dredd look like law and order. And in all likelihood, it'll be overturned on appeal before Judge Resting Bitchface can pronounce the T sound in holy fucking shit. But that's kind of sort of the fucking point. What did I say in my video about the true intent of propaganda of which show trials are an integral part? It's not about persuasion, it's about dissuasion. It's supposed to make you feel alone, powerless, and alienated for merely recognizing a self-evident truth. In the immortal words of Solzhenitsyn, whose name I probably just mispronounced, we know they are lying. They know they are lying. They know we know they are lying. We know they know we know they are lying, but still, they are lying. As I said, I've never been the biggest Alex Jones fan, so in the interest of conciliatory overtures, I have a humble, helpful suggestion for old Alex. If you need an extra billion, simple. Say you're being invaded by Russia. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed. I am alive. to the law, what I say to you is binding upon you, and you must follow my instructions. I do not have any preference as to the outcome of this case. I have not meant to convey by facial expression or tone of voice or in any other way at any time during the trial any preference or inclination as to how you should decide the facts, and you should not make any such interpretations. Are you serious?